So we talk about turnovers looking more f positive. We talk about northbound flows have been positive since February. Southbound flows have been, just been nuts. Are you seeing signs of a durable rally now? Well, actually, uh, we still keep an equal weight rating on overall China equity market. But within the China equity space, we do prefer A shares versus the Hong Kong market or the ADR space. Uh, so if you, as an investor, want to pick up the right spot to be in, in the China equity space, we think A shares is where you want to be. Uh, that being said, at the broad index level, we think the uh, upside from here onwards uh, quite, could be quite limited. Uh, for example, the target price uh, by the end of this year for CSI 300 by us is actually 35 500. That's pretty much where the market is trading right now. Mm. So I think for investors who are hoping for a very big rally at the index level, I think uh, it's probably better to, uh, for you to be a little bit cautious and try to be more uh, picking the right stocks in terms of uh, uh, versus betting on the uh, index rally from here. Right. Uh, fundamentals, I, I know you guys have been in the view that we're not quite there in terms of an ideal situation. How has, has that improved at least in the last three months? Where are you? Uh, on that story? Uh, not exactly to the extent that we would like to see and this is why we say uh, whether, why that the market is likely to remain range bound from here. Uh, if we talk about the fundamentals, let's look at the earnings, right? We think the uh, market expectation for the earnings growth for this year is still overly optimistic. Uh, consensus is still expecting somewhere between like 13 to 15 percent of earnings growth for this year, which we think would be very unlikely to achieve. And you price that in and you look at the current market valuation, it's it's quite uh, straightforward to get to the conclusion. Again, at index level, upside could be relatively capped. Okay. Um, so, should we expect that this? I mean, this gap that we've seen with China and and X China EM. I mean, are we likely to see that sort of earnings growth widen even more in terms of what we're seeing in, in the divergence right now? Uh, what we are going through right now is a quite rapid downward revision of that earnings expectation. So at some point, hopefully, towards uh, second half or towards the end of this year, we could potentially see that bottoming out of the uh, earnings uh, growth, and we could start to see some reacceleration at that point. Uh, so we are still hopeful, and uh, but it also will be uh, dependent on how the uh, top-down policy pans out uh, for the rest of the year. And potentially, we think uh, sometime during the year, the government could potentially step up the, uh, the physical policies and we could see more physical spending and that could help re-accelerate the earnings growth as well. On just net net on a I know you guys measure you have a I think it's a six factor uh, grid that you look at this market yes. from right valuations and I think policy is one of them yep. and I know it is correct me if I'm wrong that you guys don't think policy is still net supportive or where are we on that so you don't think we're it, it's quite supportive of a risk rally mm -hmm. but yeah Absolutely. We, we do have a seven-factor uh, framework seven factor, to assess the, uh, the overall <laughs> yeah. market congestion. Yeah. Fundamentals, which is the earnings. We talked about valuation, policy, mm. global liquidity, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, on the policy front, we do acknowledge that we think the policymakers are supporting, are trying to support the economy and trying to stabilize the economic mm. condition. That being said, we think so far what we have heard from the NPC, the National People's Congress, uh, the physical budgeting so far could be uh, slightly under expectation and is still more uh, focused on the supply side, which we think the reflationary effort can be, uh, can be focused more on the demand side to rejuvenate uh, the, the demand uh, from both the consumers and the corporates. Uh, again, we think the stance is quite supportive, but the magnitude can be bigger. Yeah. We've seen, I guess, rotation around this market, though, right? When After MPC, there's this new push for new productive forces. You're seeing growth come back in favor in some way over some of the dividend plays that really were one of the darlings of last year. Are, what do you make of this sort of turn in these markets? Um, is growth certainly something that you're looking at now in this market? Um, we have never uh, not looked at the, uh, the growth because we always emphasize the fact that China as an investment destination, investors come to China for its growth opportunities, not necessarily for the defensive or the value opportunities. At least that's not uh, what the mainstream investors are thinking about, yeah. right? Um, so I think uh, it actually makes a lot of sense to me that investors are doing that kind of rotation because, as I said, at the broad index level, opportunities could be limited. So investors are a lot more focused on 
identifying the right stocks. So we've been saying that looking for the earnings visibility, looking for opportunities, stocks that can beat the earnings expectation by the market, because the majority of the crowd could actually be missing that estimate. Is, so, is tech can still yes. considered a growth play? I'm looking at you know, the earnings fundamentals are weak, but then you take a look at the shareholder returns, dividends, mm -hmm. Buybacks and the like. Is this more of a value play than a growth play now? Yes, if you look, uh, if you run some quant analysis, you see some very well known and very well owned tech names actually fall into the value basket. But I think when investors come to look at these names, they still look at like the GMV growth, they still look at the potential, uh, potential uh, upgrade of consumption trend in China. So they are still looking at the growth features of these companies instead of, okay, I only want to buy this stock because they are paying dividend, because they are doing share right back. Those are nice to have, but I wouldn't consider those as the biggest driver of the stock performance for these, for these growth opportunities. Yep, and again, a couple of minutes. You have a call here. Continue to look at SOE reform as a key mm -hmm. theme to watch. We'll unpack that from Laura Wang and the Morgan Stanley team.